minutes to places thank you five so adrian yes miss tammy do okay. you remember your first artistic experience I, I mean the one that was like yeah i'm hooked i i want to do this forever well um i do remember and i I have to be honest with you and say that I don't know if at the time I was saying to myself, I have to do this forever, but I can say that I felt that way um, because I was very, very young. I was, um, I was four years old and my, um, my grandparents had recently moved to the wild outback of Florida. And there actually is an outback of ranch lands and tropical wilderness. And they were living on a lake. They built a house on the lake. And I went down to visit the lake house for the first time. And there was this huge, magnificent um, oak tree in the front yard. Mm -hmm. They were all over the yard, but there was this really, really massive one. I have no idea how old it was, probably very ancient, with hanging Spanish moss. And I was very, very, very tiny. Um, but there had been a big bow that had been cut off uh, so that they could build their house. And even though the, the tree was still there, this, this bow had been cut down, right? And um, it left a cross section that was just high enough for me to look into. And so as a tiny little girl, I would go out there and stand in front of this tree, this little cross section, and stare into the holes mm -hmm. that were in it. Because in that kind of a practice, which of course I was, for, I wouldn't call it a practice at that time. <laughs> but in just doing that, that activity, I had the opportunity to engage my curiosity and wonder. Mm -hmm. And I would stare into those holes and wonder about what kind of creatures lived inside. And I would stare into those holes and wonder what they were doing and would they ever come out to visit with me. And so it was an exercise of imagination. And as I would continue to go and visit my grandparents, that tree would grow taller as I would grow taller. So I was always connected at its sight line. So it was always something that I could do um, throughout my childhood. And at some point, and I honestly don't know if this is truth or, or I want it to be the truth, mm -hmm. a snake popped its head out. <laughs> <laughs> But it just kind of set the stage for me for what I continue to do in life, which is um, engage in curiosity and wonder. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, that is the seat of the soul of being an artist, of being a human. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm a, I'm a seeker and I seek out curiosity and wonder and ways of expressing that which I discover along the way. Yeah. Oh, I love that as like your first experience is the theater of nature, you know, being a, an audience to nature. That's so beautiful. So is that, is that where you get your inspiration still? Um, nature is largely uh, an awesome inspiration for me in all aspects of it. You know, the wonder of the night sky, the wonder of the sunset, the wonder of the creatures that roam around, including the human creatures. I mean, we are part of nature. If we say that we're not, we're, we're denying and we're buying into the delusion that um, we're something else, but we're part of it. Mm. So the natural world inspires me. Um, and I would say within humanity, within the natural world, is also kind of a body of research for me. I, I'm inspired by human behavior, right? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And, and honestly, I'm inspired by the best of human behavior. Um, kindness, uh, tolerance, acceptance, uh, patience, strength, stamina, humility, mm. authenticity, the willingness to be vulnerable, to be honest, mm. to be true. That inspires me. Yeah. I've always said um, what I think acting is, is the study of people in relationship to each other, just who we are and what we do and um, how we go after what we want, <laughs> you know, our tactics, our objectives. And mm. it's not always uh, the kindnesses that we see, you know? It's not, and you know, the one beautiful thing is that if we are gifted with waking up the next day, we get to practice again day mm. after day um, mm. at opening more and more to what I believe is an amazing abundance. I think our, our, our natural state is like nature, extraordinarily abundant. Mm -hmm. And yet we close ourselves off at every turn so mm. easy to do that right yeah my life changed for me when i got out of college when i um encountered the seed of the soul and learned about unlimited abundance mm. you know that i had been living most of my life in scarcity thinking there was only so much and i had to get you know i had to i had to claw mm. and try to, fight for, yeah and that unlimited abundance freed me of that and, and uh you know not easy to remember always but um definitely something i believe you know, life is life is an amazing an amazing teacher and I, I i try to live in a manner where um sitting with discomfort is probably one of my greatest teachers mm. and it's that thing that you know we so often want to wiggle our way out of but when i sit with discomfort man do i learn a lot yeah right and yeah. that's where, that's where i change the possibility for transformative change i think for all of us rests in those discoveries that we make when we are in pain mm. when we are being taxed Mm -hmm. And we are um, simply uncomfortable for whatever reason or reasons that mm -hmm. happens to be. Yeah, someone once told me that being uncomfortable is not an emergency. It's not. <laughs> and, um, yeah, well, that's where that curiosity can come in, you know, where you can be curious about that uncomfortability and, and why and where. So, so is there like a, um, a project that you would love to do that that you are longing to that you might have been you know have sitting back here and so i'm gonna i would respond to that by speaking in kind of a general way um because i i would love to do any work that is is fueled by truth and is fueled by love um that serves humanity by mirroring humanity which i think is what we've been talking about here and that holds the seeds of of transformative change mm. arts are a very powerful change agent if if we use them in that way mm -hmm. i'm the notion of doing art for art's sake whatever that even means i don't even know what that means anymore is not something that interests me but i am interested in using whatever artistic tools or means that are required to help to help people wake up mm. um, and i'm not saying that i'm super awake i'm in the process of awakening i feel that that's what life is about that's what existence is about um, mm. the school of life is about and i long to share the things I've discovered along the way, but also to ask questions about the things I know nothing about mm -hmm. and others may have found out before me.
Mm. So that's the kind of work that I want to do. So it's, it's original work that's built from the ground up um, with collaborators, with others of, um, who bring their stellar skills to the table. And we meet in an organic coming together and not fully knowing what's going to come forth, but mm -hmm. we allow it to happen. And I guess one other piece I want to say is that, um, well, that is the kind of work that I dream about doing. It is not just the end product, the end game. We all want to make great art and put that out there, but the journey to it needs to be fueled with these same intentions, it needs to mm. be fueled with kindness, with the intention to serve, with the intention to be charitable, not selfish. Because it, it is fueled with that other stuff, with meanness, small-mindedness, selfishness, then it's a lie. Mm. And I'm more interested in presenting truth or the quest for it. So what, what do you think is standing in your way of that? What's a barrier? It's <laughs> <laughs> a big question, isn't it? Yeah, it's the so, question, right? Um, me. <laughs> mm -hmm. me and uh mm -hmm. me in the sense of uh me being impacted by fear and yeah you know this is nothing new we hear this a lot from people um at least i talk to people a lot about it and some of it is by my own hand some of it has been instilled from long ago. Um, though what I do know is that I can't, I can't abolish fear. It's part of life. But I can make friends with it. Mm. And I can understand that I coexist with it. Mm. Um, I wrote a song about it in the multidisciplinary piece, which you saw that I did with Frank Ferraro called Cruel Shoes. Mm. And there's... Um, in the refrain, um, cruel shoes, you break me. Cruel shoes, you save me. Not gonna wear you, <sighs> not anymore. Live in the corner over there on the <laughs> there you and go. That's fear for me. That's but, right. you know, it can, fear can hang out over there. I see you. <laughs> I just don't need to be walking around or letting you walk me around. Right. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the another piece that I think gets in the way is is the culture that we're born into, and. Um, you know, everyone expects the arts. What would life be without the arts? We're trying to get a sense of that right now because we're not presenting the arts in the way that we're accustomed to presenting them, but we're figuring out new ways of doing this. Yeah. But still at the same time, we have, um, we have a nasty habit within our culture of either overvaluing or undervaluing the arts and those who make it make the arts. So there's 1% of us who are making gazillions of dollars. I don't understand that. And there's the rest of us who are scrambling to make ends meet, to working in jobs that have nothing to do with our in artistic intent and goals, but to support us while we make art, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think underlying some of that fear was something, and I, and I hate to have to relate it back to this, but the roots of it came from, from my family of origin, my, my parents, mm -hmm. who totally paved the way for me to cultivate my life as an artist and, and opening all doorways for me to train and study and do all of that and just make art for years in lots of different varieties and forms. And yet when it came time to apply to college, my father was terrified for me. Hmm. He said, you have this lengthy background in the arts. You're not going to get into a school or you're going to get into a school and you're not going to be able to support yourself and all of that 
cultural fear that, that, that crops up. Yeah. And he demanded that I write on my college application, entrance application, that while the arts have always been part of my life, they will always be a, um, a vocation rather than a vocation. Mm -hmm. And I, he was my dad. <laughs> I listened to him. I wrote that and I didn't believe it. It wasn't my truth. Mm -hmm. um, and I got into a liberal arts college and I studied the arts, all of them, and, you know, carried on from there. But, you know, I would encourage anyone who is an advocate for those who are showing a desire to lead an artistic life to encourage rather than discourage so that there isn't fear later on in that individual's life when he or she's standing on, on the one side of a, a portal, one side of a gateway and deciding whether or not to cross that threshold and really, you know, expressing him or herself yeah. and sharing that with the world. Yeah. Yeah, that, that fear piece. That fear piece is huge, you know, how it eats at us. And um, you talked about, you know, your, your shoe fears and leaving those, those fears on the floor in the corner, you know. And, um, you know, I think about something I've been reading about not, you know, there's that, there's that practice of welcoming the fear in. Like, come sit down, fear, you know? And then there's the practice beyond that, which is into the mouth of the demon. Wow. Into, just dive into the fear, you know? It's there. Like, pretending that something's not there, that is absolutely there, may not be the answer either, you know? And <sighs> these fears, they, they paralyze. And the opposite of fear is love. You know, so if we could love our fears away, you know, if we could love and let go, you know, I mean, your dad, you know, <laughs> loves you. <laughs> That's where you came from. <laughs> yeah. From love, right? Right? <laughs> well, in, in terms of, of um, shepherding and guiding, it makes me think about, you know, the future and, you know, the the artists that are that are you know here now and the ones that are coming who are you excited about well you know i have been really lately inspired by um the truth tellers i've been i've been reading a lot i've been going back to um the written word mm. and reading lots of memoirs Mm -hmm. and reading lots of poetry mm -hmm. and at the very early days of the pandemic and I was only reading a couple pages a day and and I met this this wonderful man last year in Pittsburgh when he came through um his name is Kiese Lehman and he's written a memoir called Heavy mm. and I felt like I was walking with him especially again we had just been locked down and things were extraordinarily confusing and so i engaged in walking alongside of kiese's life that had happened much longer ago than now mm -hmm. but there were so many um aspects of it that felt extraordinarily relevant to today mm -hmm. so i took my time reading him and 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 that was right on the heels of just having finished um uh joy harjo's memoir called crazy brave mm. and she had been a poet laureate um or she still is the poet laureate mm -hmm. and of the united states and she's found a way of writing her truth that is unlike anything i've ever written or read rather um natasha trethaway poet mm -hmm. is is coming out with her memoir um that is about uh, a horrific incident that happened when she was a child. Her stepfather killed her mother. And um, 
this is her truth. And I, I met her recently too in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is such a beautiful passageway for mm. you have such a rich mm -hmm. garden of artists here. And then yeah. other artists come through who yeah. fuel us, we fuel them, we have exchanges and, and she was here and I, she and I broke down in tears together and hugged each other and, and, and her piece is called Memorial Drive and it just came out. Um, Claudia Rankin, another one, a poet, um, citizen, an American lyric is her piece that I'm reading right now. Mm -hmm. She's a poet, an essayist, a playwright. And these people, I believe, are writing their truth mm -hmm. in effort to, to educate, to inspire, to share their experience of being alive and what life looks like and feels like from their view. And in the field of um, in the field of television and film, I am outrageously inspired right now by Michaela Cole and her brilliant new series called "I May Destroy You." Are you watching it? <laughs> <laughs> and it is not only the fact that she is writing it and directing it and starring in it, and it is based on her truth yep. of a sexual assault but I am outrageously inspired by how she is conducting her affairs in this horrendous industry. Mm. Um, for the film and TV industry to say that they are anything other than a standard American corporation is a lie. Um, the, the same kinds of limitations and uh, boundaries that exist within corporate America exist within the film and TV industry. Mm -hmm. And um, possibly even more so because it disguises itself as something else. Mm. She has stood her ground and asked for what she has wanted and needed. And when it was not given to her, she walked away. She walked away from amazingly lucrative deals that anyone else would have grabbed a hold of, but it would have required her to compromise herself creatively. And her integrity. And her integrity and her truth, mm. authenticity, until finally, she was given the opportunity to be the expansive human being that she is, and in allowing that, she's allowing other people to expand, and it's beautiful, <laughs> it's the way we should be running things all over the place. Oh, it's amazing <laughs> to be witness to that, we need that, we need to be witness to people marching in that direction, then we know we can do it too. That's right. We need to see that, you know? We need those role models and those guides. Yep. Places. Oh, it's showtime. Places. <laughs> it's showtime. <laughs> Have a wonderful show, my dear. You too, my friend. So All good right. to talk to you. Break a leg. <laughs>